running in SQLite. Okay, so let's start off. Okay, Emacs make person dot SQL. Okay, I'm going to do this to get started with my database. Okay, I'm going to create a table to keep track of people. Each one has their login ID, their last name, and their first name. And I'm going to have Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, Ike Quebec, and Jimi Hendrix. Wouldn't that have been a great band? Okay. Everybody can see what I'm doing there? Right. No surprises. I'm creating a table. It's going to have three columns, and it's going to have four rows. I can add more rows after the table's created. It's really difficult to add more columns. You have to decide on the shape of your table. What are the fields we're going to keep? Once you've got that, it's easy to append more rows or delete existing rows. It's difficult to go back in and say, let's insert another column or let's take a column out. Everybody okay with that? I've got to decide on what information I want to record per entry up front, and I should get that right. And after that, it's pretty easy to say another record, another record, another record. Okay? Can we rename that columns? Um, you can. Again, it has knock-on effects that we'll come back to later. This is one of those places where, as my dad used to say, a week of hard work can save you an hour of thought. A little bit of upfront thinking about what data do I want to record will save you a lot of grief down the road. It's doable, but you might wind up with your tables being in an inconsistent state and you'll get all sorts of silent failures. It's something where you have to be really careful. Okay, so <coughs> there's my people. I'm also going to make a table for albums. I'm going to give each one an integer ID. You know, I would have called it ISBN or DOI or something like that, but let's just call it album ID. And there's the name of the album. Okay, so far so good. Here's the tracks on the album. Ooh, this is starting to look. This is start, what? What? This is starting to look a little bit. Why did I do it this way? Well, that's the ID of the album. That's the serial number of the album. Okay. This is the ID of the track. First track on that album, second track on that album. First track on that, second track on that, first track on that, second track on that. How many people were involved? How many artists were playing on it? When was it recorded? How long did we spend recording it? Okay. No means I don't have any data. I don't know. It's not the same as zero. It's not the same as empty string. It is I have absolutely no idea what should go there. I don't know when that track was recorded. It's a special word in SQL. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it means there's nothing here. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So, let's load up the albums and the tracks. Album.sql and make track.sql the music database. Okay, let's go through music.db. First thing, there's a command when you're interactive called .schema. It shows you, and there's a dot at the front. It's not a standard part of SQL, so they put a dot at the front. It's a command that shows you What's the shape of my data? What tables do I have? What columns do they have? What are their field types? Okay, These are the two tables I've created. So let's have a look at what's in the albums table. Select album ID and album name from album. Okay, the data I expect is there. I can also say select star from album and get everything. Star means just give me all the columns. It's quite common to want all of it. So there's a shorthand. Star means all of the columns. Take a look at the data again. Yes, I'm getting all of the data from the album table. Okay. Well, let's have a look at what's in the track table. Okay. Okay. Track contains the album ID, the track ID. How many people involved? When was it recorded? How long did they spend in the studio? Okay, which ones took a long time to record? Select star from track where 
hours greater than five. Okay, it gives me back those entries where the hours value is greater than five. Okay. Let's say select, can people at the back see this or should I raise it up? I should raise it up. Better? Okay, select everything from track where hour is greater than five and track date is less than 1990. Nope, didn't work. Should be one entry there. Oh, no, there isn't. Yes, there is. Why is the first entry not showing up? What have I done wrong? Well, let's break it down into pieces. Let's find all the ones that were recorded before 1990. Hmm. Please don't require me to do that. Okay, so I have to provide something for month and day. Postgres is smarter. It knows that if you say 1990, that any date in 1989 is earlier. Okay, so we have to provide some dummy values for month and day in this database. But at least it's free and it's cheap and fast. Okay? What is it? Fast? Fast, cheap, reliable? Pick zero? Right. Okay, so now let's say, let's get everything from track where hours greater than five and track date less than 1990 000. Yep. Okay. That entry satisfies both conditions. What about things where I spent more than five hours after the start of 1990? There's two of them that satisfy that. Okay. So I can start creating these conditions, these tests, and the database always does things the same way. Which table am I looking at? What conditions am I using to select? What do I want to show? It's always a three-stage process. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Right. Now. Um, just for the date, did you tell us it was a date, actually? No, I didn't. I, I'm storing it as text. SQLite, almost every database knows how to manage dates properly and has a date type. This particular version of SQLite, as I discovered about an hour ago, I should not have updated last night, okay? So I'm working around that. I'm just storing the dates as text, which